Excel accounting practice problem. Create accounting worksheet part number eight. Get ready, because we're about to Excel with Excel. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. In prior presentations, we have been putting this together from scratch from a new sheet. We're going to be continuing on with that process. If you have access to this Excel worksheet, you're going to have two tabs on down below. Example tab, practice tab. Let's take a look at the example tab now. The example tab in essence being an answer key. The information on the left hand side, we put the information for the journal entries that we're going to be recording. Then we're going to be posting those to the trial balance as well as to the general ledger so we created the general ledger the longest of the processes then we looked at the subsidiary ledgers for accounts receivable as well as accounts payable now we're considering the subsidiary ledger related to the inventory account back to the practice tab then so we're all the way on the left again we're going to then go on over to our trial balance we're looking now at the inventory account, that 4375 We would like to support that with another subsidiary ledger, which would be tracking the actual inventory units that we're going to be dealing with. So we're going to make a fairly basic kind of Excel worksheet. We're going to assume that we have a, an average kind of system, the weighted average method. You got LIFO, you got FIFO, you got weighted average, you got specific identification. This tracking of the inventory could be much more complex depending on the types of inventory that you that you might have so we're going to be setting up a, a fairly basic system that would just be a subsidiary ledger to give an idea of the subsidiary ledger calculation and then calculating it using the weighted average one of the flow methods the primary three flow methods that being lifo last in first out fifo first in first out and the weighted average so to do that, we're going to go all the way to the to the right. I'm going to hide some columns again. And there's no other column that really is going to be useful to us because this is going to look different than, than the GL and the subsidiary ledger. So I'm just going to hide everything from column J all the way over to what we completed last time, which is going to be the subsidiary ledger for the, for the accounts payable. Let go, right click. Let's hide that whole thing and just focus now in on the subsidiary ledger in essence for the for the inventory i'm going to make this account a little bit smaller and we're going to do the same process in that i would like this first cell to basically be a check or add up what the subsidiary ledger will add up to the second cell is going to be another another check to compare it to the inventory here so i'm going to actually type in inventory subsidiary ledger here to track the inventory note you might hear different names on different kind of inventory tracking reports but the idea that it's being subsidiary it's subsidiary to the gl account for inventory in that it should match up the cost should match up to what's on the, the trial balance here what's on the balance sheet and the general ledger account I'm gonna make those black let's just make this whole thing uh, black and white just so we can differentiate it from what we'll be working on on down below making that black and white so then i'm going to call the inventory inventory items i'm going to call them items item one and item two these items could be things that we sell it would be dependent on what kind of industry we're in i'm just going to make a gener generic type of inventory assuming that we're purchasing something and then marking up that item and then selling that item so we're just going to call them items. I'm just going to call them item one and item two generically. Now there's a couple things that are going to happen with the inventory. They're going to go up with the purchases. So we're going to have to show the activity of them increasing. They're going to go down when we sell them. And we can call that the cost of goods sold. And then we're going to say the ending balance then is going to be what still remains on the, on the balance sheet. We're going to call that the ending inventory. So what I'll do then is, is we'll say first, this first item will in essence be the date range. And I'll also put the inventory name over here. And then in the second column, there's going to be three columns, which are going to include the units, the unit costs, and the total cost. The first three columns, I'm going to have an, an overhead uh, label called purchases. Purchases, purchases. And that's going to go heading over the first three columns. So I'm going to select these three columns. I'm not going to merge them. We could merge them by going to the Home tab and then and then center these items. So center the items like that. But I don't like doing that mainly. I'm going to undo that. Instead, I'm going to do what we've seen in the past, 
right click on it we're going to go to the format cells and then i'll go up top and say that we would like alignment I'm going to say horizontal alignment center across those cells so there we have it let's make that the green the green color that we've seen before so i'm going to hit the drop down and make that that dark green and then we'll make this the the light green here let's just make it white we'll make this white for the purchases it's not quite the same as you know the asset or the in or the accounts over here but we'll use a similar color pattern and then the next are going to be the cost of goods sold cost of goods sold and i'm going to do the same thing i want i'm going to have three columns related to the cost of goods sold so these are when we sell the items so it's going to be a decrease to the ending inventory so i'm going to right click on this item and let's go down to the format cells, say format the cells, and we're in alignment. I'm going to say center across this selection, center across that selection. And then I'm going to make that the blue icon items because it's kind of like that's when we're going to expense them. So I'll make them that the dark blue. We made the dark blue over here. I think it was this blue. And then we're going to go to the lettering. And let's just make that white again too. And then the last one is going to be the ending inventory. So the ending inventory. Ending inventory. So this is going to be what's remaining on the balance sheet. Let's center these across three cells again. Right click on it. I'm going to say center. And we want to format those cells. We want to format the cells. And I'm going to say horizontal alignment across those three cells. So we're going to have that there. And then this one also could be basically an asset account. So I'll make that green too. So I'll make this one that dark green and white. So there we have it. Now the three headers that we're going to be putting in place are going to be the units that we're going to be dealing with. The units that we're actually selling. I'm going to actually bring that down. Units. And then we've got the unit cost. So unit cost is a little wide it might not i might want that instead on two columns so i'm going to say unit in the first one and then cost underneath it unit cost and this is going to be the total cost so those those are basically our headers so i'm going to select those three let's make those back to the black and white this time let's make them black and white so they differentiate from this header up top and center it there so there we have that. And then under these three, going to have the same, the same headers. I could just copy these. Let's go ahead and copy these. Put them there and put them there. So there we have it. These items, I'm actually going to, I'm going to label it up top. So we can label it. Actually, let's label it here. Item. I'm going to call it item one. That would be the name of the inventory item we're going to say here, which is, I know, very generic right there. And that one, I'm going to make that dark green. And we'll make it white, the green and white for our invent or green and the light green, the dark green and the light green. And then I'm going to have the date, date underneath it. Let's format this with the black and white, black and white. So there we got it. Now the date, I'd like to have that same kind of formatting on the date as we saw over here with the date formats. So the same date format we had here, I'm going to put over. So I'm going to format paint that and paste that like in the date field down to maybe column 12 let's bring it on down to column 12 so then if i put like one one it gives me a date format that looks good so then we're going to do the same thing where we have in essence just a beginning balance beginning balance so so this type of format will help us as activity happens meaning when purchases happen then we're going to put the purchases in this these three columns unit the unit cost and then the total and then we'll have to calculate what the impact will be in the ending inventory after that change takes place and then if we sell an item we could put the cost of goods sold here which is going to be us representing us reducing the ending inventory and recording the expense of cost of goods sold and then we're going to have to see what the impact of that will be on the ending inventory so we'll look at that process later if that doesn't fully make sense right now. If you haven't worked with this kind of worksheet, then that's okay. But right now, we're just going to start with our beginning balances, which we're going to assume are on the outer column in the ending inventory. I'm just going to make up an ending balance, which is I'm going to say 50 units at the unit cost of 50. 
And that means if they have 50 units at a unit cost of 50, multiplying those two out, that would give us then the 2,500 for the total. Let's go ahead and make this blue, make this blue and bordered, selecting these items, font group, just normal border all around. We're gonna go to the bucket and make it blue. So it's blue and bordered. Now I'm gonna have to do another one of these for each of the inventory items. I'll do the same thing that we did with the general ledger and have basically enough space here for that will kind of line up to my trial balance. So the next one, I'm gonna select this, this whole thing and I'll even select the headers too to make sure that I have the headers along. Copy that and paste that down here. And then I'm just gonna call this item two, whatever the second kind of inventory is. These are inventory units. So I'm selling one thing, one type of thing up here, widget number one. And I'm telling selling one other thing, widget number two here, tracking them separately, given the fact that they're different inventory types. Assuming that this one costs, we're gonna say $75 and that we have 25 of those units on hand. Multiplying that out, we get the 1,875. So then once we start to sell these items, uh, or if we purchase these items, say I purchase item number two, we would put the unit amount here, the unit cost, multiply those out. Then we'd have to adjust the ending inventory to compensate for that purchase. And if we sell something, we're gonna say the units that we sold unit cost which we're going to have to figure out what that unit cost is in the event that the unit costs change over time given the fact that these same unit items could have variant costs which we're going to apply some kind of cash flow method such as first in first out last in first out or weighted average i believe we'll use the weighted average here and then we'll have to then accommodate and see what the ending inventory will be after that has taken place. So at this point in time, we're just starting off with these ending inventory amounts at the 1,875. I'm gonna do the same thing we did before, which is basically try to bring this all, all the way down, but I'm just gonna say it equals the one above it. And that, that way I can copy this down to the bottom so that we have an item at the bottom and then we'll adjust these row by row and it'll flow all the way down to the bottom each time, allowing us then to, to, to reference that bottom cell and not have to recalculate our reference number each time. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna say this equals the one above it, and we'll just copy that one down to the bottom. Then we'll put our total up top, which is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna say the total of our sub ledger, then it's gonna be that 2,500, which we in essence just made up, but we've made it up with more detail giving the inventory and the units so that they tie out to that three four thousand three seventy five. We're going to add to that then that one thousand eight seventy five, and and there we have the the four thousand three seventy five matching here because we in essence made these numbers up at this point to give us our starting point. But we want a starting point that lines up with regards to the number of units or the inventory that we have to the amount on the GL and the trial balance the amount on the gl and the trial balance just showing the dollar amount then the subsidiary ledger breaking that out by the units and the type of inventory items that we have then we'd like to match that out and compare it to what is on uh what is here on the trial balance we could do our our similar kind of process i'm going to take this cell minus then this cell and there we have that so it adds up to zero I'd like to format this now so that if it's between negative one and one, it's gonna be green. If it goes outside that range, it's gonna turn red. We could do that by going down here and using the format painter, but let's just do it again, just to get some practice with that. So I'm gonna go up top. We're gonna to do our conditional formatting, home page styles, conditional formatting. We're gonna say if it's greater than, greater than one, we want it to turn red. And I'm gonna say, okay. And then conditional formatting. If it's less than negative one, we want it also to turn red. Okay. One more time, conditional formatting. If it's between negative one and tab one, we want it to turn not red like it is doing now, but rather green like so. And then, okay. So if something happens here and we change something, like like if this if this changed to 60, then we're gonna have a difference and it's gonna turn green. 
put it back to the 50. So that looks good. If we changed it to 40, then it would turn, it would be negative and turn green back to the 50. And that'll give us our indication that we're doing everything properly. Now, next, we're going to think about the, the financial statements, at least the primary two financial statements, that being the balance sheet and the income statement, see, and see if we could tie that into this entire thing so that when we start to do the data input, we can see how each individual transaction will kind of flow through this whole process in an Excel worksheet like this, where we can kind of manually put it in place. Once we are able to do that, we'll understand how the database program in essence works a lot more if you move that into like a database program, like an accounting software kind of system. So I'm going to put my cursor on column I now and then drag it over to BO. We're going to let go, right click on that selected area and unhide it. So there we have it. And so that that's going to be it for this one.